Section 3.5 Rational Functions, question number 9. Here we're given a graph and we want to determine the equations of the asymptotes of the rational function. And those asymptotes are depicted with the dotted lines. We have a dotted vertical line and a dotted horizontal line. So our ver vertical asymptotes is this vertical line. Notice right here that vertical line goes through right right through five on the x-axis. So the vertical asymptote, VA for short, is x equals five. It goes through five on the x-axis. The horizontal asymptote is you wanna look at where it crosses through the y-axis, crosses through the y-axis here at two. So the equation is y equals two for the horizontal asymptote. Question number 10, we're asked to identify any horizontal or vertical asymptotes of the graph. Now it looks like there's um, vertical asymptotes. You know, let me go ahead and zoom into this. It looks like there is a vertical asymptote somewhere perhaps around three or four. So imagine we had, if you look at the choices, um, looks like positive three here is a vertical asymptote. And it also looks like here at negative three, we have a vertical asymptote. So we can say plus or minus three, x equals plus or minus three of the hor um, vertical asymptotes. And then the y, it does look like it does tend to flatten out perhaps through here at y equals negative six. So you can determine the equations of the vertical asymptote. It goes through positive three on the x-axis and negative three on the x-axis. So x is equal to plus or minus three. It goes through negative six on the y-axis. So y equals negative six would be a horizontal asymptote. So it appears that Choice B is the correct answer for number 10. So you're looking for um, parts of the graph where the graph will tend to flatten out or get closer and closer. Let's look at number 11. At number 11, we're asked to graph the rational function. For question number 11, we want to graph the rational function f of x, which is equal to the quantity x minus 2 divided by the quantity x plus 3. The way to sketch rational functions is to sketch those vertical and horizontal asymptotes. The uh, vertical asymptote is the value that makes the denominator zero. So we're going to set x plus three equal to zero. And we see x equals negative three is a vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is found by looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator and the leading coefficients. Since the degrees are the same, the equation is balanced, and the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. 1 over 1 simplifies to 1. So that, that could be your setup for sketching the graph. You want to draw a, the x and y axis. You're going to draw a dotted vertical line through negative 3 and a dotted horizontal line through one. And I'm gonna use dotted to denote that the graph is gonna approach these and it should get closer and closer to these, but it's not gonna end up touching. Now to graph a few more points, we can make a table of values, x and f of x. And what I do is I usually pick a few points to the left of the vertical asymptote and a few points to the right of the vertical asymptote. So I would say maybe perhaps negative five for x, negative four for x, 
negative 3 for x, negative 2, and negative 1. I chose values that are really close to that vertical asymptote because I want to know what's happening to the graph. The graph is eventually going to flatten out to that horizontal asymptote, and it's going to go to positive or negative infinity as you approach 3, so I want to know what happens close. So if you plug in these values for x, uh, you plug in negative 5, you get uh, negative 7 over negative 2, 7 over 2, which is 3.5. And go ahead and complete the rest of those, plugging in the value for x and solving to get the y values. If you plug negative 4 in for x, you get negative 6 divided by negative 1, and that will give you a positive 6. If you plug negative 3, you're going to get something that's undefined. That's an error. And, and that's where that vertical asymptote will be found. If you plug in negative 2, you get negative 4. Plug in negative 1, you get negative 1.5. We're going to use those along with the other points as guidelines. So I'm plotting negative 5. 3.5, negative 5 up 1, 2, 3.5, plug in negative 4, you get positive 6, 6. So just from those two points, you can begin to get an idea of what the graph looks like. If you need to do a few more points, for example, if you plug in negative 6, you get 2.6, Plug in negative 7, you get 2.25. You will start to see that this graph is going to curve up and get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. Uh, now we can plug a few more points. Plug in negative 2, you get negative 4. Plug in negative 1, you get negative 1.5. You can plug in 0, you get negative 0. 0.6. Uh, plug in 2. You get zero. You just want to do enough points so you have a good idea of what the, the shape of the graph looks like. So that graph is going to approach, going to flatten out to that horizontal asymptote. It's going to go up and down around that vertical asymptote. Now of all the choices I have here, it looks like choice C. Um, it looks like choice C. And zoom in. It appears that there's a vertical asymptote at negative 3 and a horizontal asymptote at positive 1. Okay, just a couple more from this section. Question number 12, graph this rational function. We're going to do that in a similar way that we did the previous one. You can see it's actually very close to the one we just did. So we can find the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to 0. And we get x equals negative 3. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. And the reason why is because the equation is balanced and you look at the coefficients 1 over 1. You can use that, negative 3, and positive 1 for your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And then you can plot a few more points to determine what's happening with the graph. Using my dotted line, vertical line at negative 3. Whoops. Okay, so we have a dotted vertical line that represents our asymptote, vertical asymptote, and that dotted horizontal line. And then we just need to pick a few points in between. Make a table of values. And I'm going to choose values such as uh, negative 5, negative 4. Negative 3 is going to be undefined. Negative 2 and negative 1. So if you plug in negative 5, in this case you get 4.5. Plug in negative 4, you get 8. Plug in negative 2, you get negative 6. Negative 1, you get negative 2.5. Plot those points. 
negative 4, 8. Okay, so just from those two points, you should begin to see that the graph is going to get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote, and it's going to also flatten out. What happens with all the equations that have horizontal asymptotes, they will eventually flatten out. Plug in negative 2, you get negative 6. Negative 1, negative 2.5. And you can plug in 4. And from those, you get an idea of what the graph looks like. And it appears that choice C for me does look like a graph that has a vertical asymptote at negative 3 and a horizontal asymptote at positive 1. So I'm going to choose C. All right, in the very last one, we want to sketch this rational function f of x, which is equal to 6x divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3. So this one, we're going to find the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0. If you set x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0, this is a quadratic equation you can solve by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. If you factor this, the factors are x minus 3 and x plus 1. Set each of those factors equal to 0, and you get x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote and set x plus 1 equal to 0, you get x equals negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is going to be uh, found by looking at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. This is a bottom-heavy function. Whenever the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, we, we call it bottom-heavy, and the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. So with those three asymptotes, we can begin to have an idea of what the graph looks like. We're going to graph a dotted vertical line at positive 3, a dotted vertical line at negative 1, and a dotted horizontal line at 0. And then we just need to plot a few points. Uh, we can do that by making a table of values. And f of x. And since we have a vertical asymptote here at negative 1, I'm going to choose a few points over here, say perhaps um, negative 3, negative 2. You plug in negative 1, we're going to get an error. I would choose a couple points in between 0, 1, 2, 3, and then maybe a couple points afterwards. Now you can plug each of those in for x. Now if you have a graphing calculator, you can enter this equation into the y equals, making sure you put parentheses around the whole numerator and the whole denominator, and then I'll show you how we can make a table and use those tables, uh, the table of values to generate the graph. Okay, so you enter the equation into the y equals. Remember to put the whole denominator in parentheses and the whole numerator. It's okay if you don't put the whole numerator in this case, and because 6x, whenever you have a plus or a minus in the numerator or denominator, you definitely want to make sure you put parentheses around the whole numerator and denominator. Now instead of pressing graph, I'm going to press second and table, second graph, and you get this table. You can use your arrows up and down so you can see um, when x is negative 3, if you were to plug that into the original function, you would get negative uh, 1.5. If you plug in negative 2, you get negative 2.4. Plug in negative 1, you get an error. That's where the vertical asymptote is. If you plug in 0, you get negative 1.5. Plug in, um, I'm sorry, plug in 0, you get 0. Sorry. Plug in 1, you get negative 1.5, and plug in 2, you get negative 4. Plug in 3, you get an error. That's where the other vertical asymptote is. And I want to scroll down to see uh, when x equals 4 and x equals 5. This is using the table and the graphing calculator. You get 4.5, I'm sorry, 4.8 and 2.5. Now we're just going to plot those points. And 
negative 3, negative 1.5, negative 2, negative 2.4. Just from those two points, we know that graph is going to flatten out and it's going to approach that vertical asymptote. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 1, you get negative 1.5. Plug in 2, you get negative 4. So the graph is going to go this way, and then it's probably going to go back up that way, and then plug in a few points here. Plug in 4, you get 4.8. Plug in 5, you get 2.5. And it's going to approach the vertical asymptote, and it's going to flatten out. So the graph should look something like this. You can also graph, check your graph with a graphing calculator. You see it goes down, it kind of wiggles through, and it goes down again and flattens out. For all of the choices here, it looks like, let's see, it looks probably like the third choice here. At, here we go. Okay, so the key to making these graphs of rational functions is to determine where there are any vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and then plot a few points to get um, an idea of what the graph looks like.